And we're with Ken Fishong of Sonoma County Tourism. He's the president and CEO. He's basically the, the king of Sonoma County. Isn't that the, isn't that the next step? They give you a crown and you're, you just run the joint? Uh, no, I, I, I defer the crown to the chairman of my board of directors. <laughs> And, and, and future politician. <laughs> but you, you are one of the forces behind bringing the world to Sonoma County and, and, and as a consequence, Sonoma County to the world. And it's, it's been pretty amazing what you've achieved over the last uh, decade, really. How long have you been with it? Uh, uh, this is my 11th year. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. When you got here, what was it like? Did you see the potential? How did you know it could become what it was? It um, well, I think there were, we started really from the ground up in terms of building Sonoma County Tourism and the organization and there was really no desk it was very limited amount of there was a organization that was part of the Economic Development Board um, but they didn't have a substantial budget and we mm -hmm. were the first region in the state to be funded by business improvement assessment versus a tax so it really gave us the ability for our board members which are lodging property owner operators to be look at themselves as investors Right. And we're a private nonprofit, but we operate much more like a for-profit because one of, one of our industry's big frustrations in terms of uh, hotel and lodging properties is that a lot of times destination marketing organizations in the past have been so dependent upon tax revenue right. and dollars, and they've been very bureaucratic. And when we started, it was Sonoma County Tourism Bureau. Right. And as we went through it, we realized we are not anywhere, way, you know, we're not a bureaucratic organization at all. We w try to stay nimble. Um, we try to react to trends, to changes. I mean, in the last 10 years, we had four years of extreme recession. Right. Um, so we've been able to consistently uh, survive and thrive in the well, destination. How do you do that? I mean, I know culturally, having worked with you guys a bit, that it's a really dynamic organization and really fun and really creative. Thank you. How do you keep that culture there? Is that is that part of how you're able to pivot? Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we do, we embrace failure. Okay. Um, because that's, to that's me, we do every day. Every yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a former athlete, you yeah. know, I, I think one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned was, you know, I I, I uh, competed in skating and played basketball and. And I was having a really good couple of weeks, and I was landing my jumps and doing beautifully. And my my pro, that was my coach, yeah. uh, was we should really. The viewers may not know you are like a giant of a of a, of a dude. You're like yeah, a yeah, strapping dude, like six six four, four. Yeah. yeah. And with skates, I'm about six eight. So nice. I was a little little tall for it, but they used to call me the gazelle because <laughs> I could jump so high. That's great. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so you know, I was having this two week period where I thought, oh, I'm doing really good. I'm landing my jumps. Everything's going great. And he was, she was being really, really tough on me. And, and I said, what's wrong? She says, well, you haven't fallen. It uh -huh. means two things. Either you're not trying anything new, you know, or you're not pushing yourself hard enough. So that's always kind of been my mantra in terms of how I run the organization. And so we encourage people to fall or to fail by trying something new. And then we keep pushing ourselves um, to excel and, and to grow. And I think that's been the, at the core of how, and our board has been so supportive of that as the organization has evolved and grown over the last uh, 10 plus years. So you, you avoid complacency. If yes. something's working, if something worked last year, do you do it again or do you find a way to reiterate well, that? Well, there are certain aspects of what we do that, we ha that are repetitive that we have to do, but then we go out you know, my other philosophy is we don't we're, we're, we don't think outside the box. Why? Because we have no box. Right. And so, <laughs> what we've done is we've challenged ourselves to take on bigger and uh, more dynamic and more challenging tasks each year. Um, we started with just three people in mm -hmm. a little office, you know, in, in Santa Rosa. Um, we now have six offices domestically in the United States. We have. Representation like, like throughout the United States. So throughout the I know United States, Chicago. I think Austin. Am well, I? our our biggest market is the state of California. So we're in Sacramento and Southern California and Orange County. Mm -hmm. Our second largest market for visitors to Sonoma County is the state of Texas. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. So we've been we've had an office in Texas for nine years now. Wow. Um, and then the third largest is the Midwest U.S. So Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, we're in Chicago and Washington D.C. as well. So, and then we expanded about five years ago internationally. And so we have uh, international representation right now in the UK and Ireland, uh -huh. in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and France. Wow. And then as well in Australia, New Zealand. And this year we're <laughs> going into Scandinavia, which is another good market for 
Sonoma County. And, and eventually Mars. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. How, yeah. Like, yeah. So as, as a leader, I mean, are, are you a taskmaster? I mean, are, how, how, do you, how do you corral all of this now that you're essentially in an international organization? How, how, how do you keep them on task without a box? And well, there's, we have a, it's a pretty complex thing to understand. And, and a lot of times, uh, you know, our staff has a tough time when they say we're destination marketing professionals explaining to our own families what we do. Right. Um, but there's it, we're a series, there's about 120 trade shows and events that we attend throughout the year um, in the different markets. And we have staff deployed to the different markets. About 60% of what we do is focused on the individual traveler, be it for business or leisure. 30% okay. is on meetings and conventions, and 10% is on turn travel, small group business. So we're about a 60-40 mix between um, individual travel if you're, you know, for people that are either going on vacation or going on a business trip to folks that are going to meetings, conventions, or uh, actual tours, that's about 40% of what we do. So our and staff are deployed geographically and then by market as well. And so everybody And, and the goal is, is to get people to come here? The goal is to put, we put heads in beds yeah. and, and increase the, uh, our BIA revenues, and which in turn increase the transient occupancy tax revenues. The BIA is the business improvement assessment of which two thirds of our funding comes from. Mm -hmm. So if we do a better job of, of putting heads in beds and filling lodging properties in Sonoma County, then those numbers go up either through occupancy or as demand increases through rate. And the radial effect of that, of bringing that economy here, is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. We're with Ken Fishong, the president and CEO of Sonoma County Tourism, and we'll be right back. And we're back with Ken Fishong, the president and CEO of Sonoma County Tourism. We were talking previously about how all of your efforts contribute to this sort of virtuous circle, we'll say, or, or cycle of, of how the economy functions here with uh, tourism and, and such. But I wanted to roll back a little bit uh, to when you first encountered Sonoma County and how it, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a narrative began in your life that brought you back to Sonoma County. You were 11 when you first came yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we took my folks, I grew up on the East Coast, and we took a, a holiday vacation, uh, my little brother and I and my mom and dad, and drove cross country. and. And um, we came up here and, and uh, I remember it vividly because um, we'd been staying in wonderful hotels and going out to great restaurants. And, and we went into the city, into San Francisco, and yeah. we went to Aliotos on Fisherman's Wharf. Of course, that's great. Yeah. And you know, I'm looking at the Golden Gate Bridge with the sun shining and sparkling and the f boats coming in and out of the harbor and, and uh, having this wonderful experience. And I turned to my parents and I said, you know what, mom and dad, when I grow up, I wanna be in the restaurant hotel business. <laughs> And they just looked at me and kind of <laughs> laughed, uh, and I've never looked back. It's, it's what was it? Do you think what 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 resonated for you at that age? I mean, besides um, the beauty well, and there's a little more to that story. Okay, you know how Aliotos has the kind of old school waiters with the you know the black bow ties and the kind of tuxedo outfits, right, and the, and, yeah. and we had a very traditional older school waiter, and he came over and. And he said, little boy, would you like to see the, ch the children's menu? And I was, no, I'd like the adult menu, please. And, and uh, my little brother, who was you know, seven at the time, said, oh, you know, he's, oh, I'd like the adult menu then too. And, and so I looked at the menu, and they had at that point in time, they had abalone on the menu. Okay. And I remember my grandmother's staircase in Connecticut, those beautiful iridescent shells. Right, right. And I said, anything that looks that pretty, has to taste amazing. <laughs> and so the waiter comes back and, and I said, you know, and he asked me and I said, I'd like the abalone steak, please, and sir. And he says, little boy, aren't you, don't you want a hamburger or a hot dog? You know, he wasn't used to this. And yeah. I, my parents had always brought us up on a, with, you know, a pretty, you know, open mind in terms of trying new things. And yeah. I've always, I started cooking when I was six years old and, and uh, helping my mom in the kitchen and I've always enjoyed cooking. And, so you had and, a sophisticated palate. So yeah, so, <laughs> so I mean, I was eating that abalone and just, I was, that was a magical moment. It's kind of an aha moment. The first time like you have uh, a wine that you just really, really are amazed by, you yeah. know? And so I've always been, you know, from a, a young age, I've had a huge interest in, a creative interest in, in food and beverage. Right. And, and I was able to follow that, you know, and I was tall. 
Yeah. So I started working uh, when I was 14 at a banquet hall, the Trails Banquet Hall as a waiter. <laughs> um, and I wasn't really allowed to work till I was 16, but it was my best friend's parents' business. But you could pass as, a, as an adult. And yeah. I could, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so I really set out to work in every aspect of the restaurant and hotel business. Um, and I got all kinds of experience, everything from Taco Bell to... Uh, to fine dining and, and worked as a cook and worked my way up as a sous chef with Don the Beachcomber and wow. Hilton while I was in college and then majored in restaurant hotel ma management and foreign language. At, at, um, at Purdue, so and yeah, and then. At Purdue. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, what, what, this is obviously a passion? Yeah, it, it, It's absolutely. more than a profession, obviously, yeah. Yes. Besides the seminal experience of, of the abalone and, and, and the way that uh, you're able to sort of navigate your career, what keeps you in it? What keeps you in this game? Oh, it's never the same thing twice. Okay. It's not something for people that enjoy repetitive behavior. Because um, I, I would imagine being in Cinema County, it's still always Cinema County, but you're saying it's a dynamic. Oh, it is. Okay. And it's, I mean, there's never, you know, the, when you're working with, when we're working to book different pieces of business here, every group has a completely different dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's an, a, a medical association or a corporation or, you know, a uh, what we call a Smurf group, which is social, <laughs> military, educational, religious, fraternal, um, not the little blue people. Right. And so there's always a different dynamic there. And then our environment changes constantly. Right. I mean, we look at, you know, contrast the, this year, this winter in Sonoma County to last year. And so there's always change there. And then we also, you know, we have taken on some, some big, hairy, bodacious tasks um, uh, the Good to Great book talks about those, and, yeah. and you know, one of which we're in the midst of right now is Super Bowl Fifty. I was going to say, right? Yeah, and that's, that's big. That's we've mean, been working yeah. on this for two years, but this is another way that we push our own envelope and we say, look, we wanted to raise the cachet of the visitor that comes to Sonoma County. This right. was one of our board board chair's missions um, three years ago, and so we started looking at how are we going to do that, and how can we get an in with a, with a group of very influential people that would enjoy the products that Sonoma County has to offer. Right. Um, and so we were able to uh, get in on the ground floor with the local organizing committee for Super Bowl 50 and we became the first and we are the main destination and wine sponsor for all the events. And we've been That's great. How, that do you get, how do you create that relationship? I mean, do you know somebody? Do you, I mean, we had uh, Honor Comfort, who was we have well of course, part of it. Right, let yeah. me go back and yeah. the other synergy that has been so important to us. Uh, Ten years ago, we formed a partnership with the Sonoma County Vintners and the Sonoma County Wine Growers, um, and so we are office together. We share marketing programs and platforms together. Our executive committee of, of our boards meet jointly, and we look at how we can be stronger together. We share staff. Um, it's been an amazingly powerful partnership. Um, there's, it's the only one of its kind, you know, anywhere in the world. And it makes so much um, sense, what a great. It know, does. Yeah. So, you know, as I like to say it, it's the farmers that grow the grapes, the vintners that make the wine, and then us bringing all the people to, to drink it and right. buy it. Yeah. Um, and so we've been able to accomplish so much uh, with that partnership. Um, we share the same brand mark. We did a whole brand, a two-year brand identification. Um, we have, we do programs like Sonoma in the City, where we take the whole Sonoma County show on the road, um, the wine grape product for both the trade, right. sommeliers, and the consumer. Um, and we travel to different parts of, mainly the United States that are major markets for us. Like we were in Chicago last year. This year we'll be in Houston and Austin. Well, let me ask you, I mean, do you, doing all this road show and all this groundwork that would lead to like a, uh, working with the Super Bowl um, or in, in, in its you know, sphere, do you feel you're competing with other wine countries like Napa? No, um, we want, the, and particularly with Super Bowl, the the goal was to get the entire Bay Area to participate in part of this. Right. And you know, we have a habit at Sonoma County Tourism. When you ask us to jump, we say how high. Right. And so when we were approached on this, our board and all three boards of tourism and vendors and wine growers and immediately went, we went to work, staff figured out what we had to do because it was a sizable amount of cash right. and in-kind um, wine and, and we had to come up with in-kind for lodging and meeting space. And um, so we, we got together on this, uh, but the goal, for example, with Super Bowl was to get as many of the Bay Area destinations together because we, our competitors are not 
necessarily Napa or Marin or Mendocino or Tri Valley or Monterey. Mm -hmm. We need to unite because our competitors are global. Now right. we have a global travel world. So our competitors are Australia, New Zealand, Tuscany, France, yeah, you know, some of the I other it, really yeah. fine, South Africa, some of the other wine regions. So the more that we can partner together and work together on things like Super Bowl, um, Napa is, is also became involved after we did and we're delighted that they did. We wish, we wish that Tri-Valley and Monterey, you know, Monterey is involved from uh, on a smaller scale right. and, and we really would like to see them because it only makes us stronger. It's that power many in one that we've realized with the TRIO partnership with the Vintners, Wine Growers and Tourism. Um, so I meet regularly and I travel yeah. with my peers in Mendocino, Marin, Napa, uh, Monterey. They're all good friends. Um, well, let's pick up on these synergies when we come back. We're with okay. Ken Fishong, the CEO and President of Sonoma County Tourism. And we're back with Ken Fishong, the CEO and President of Sonoma County Tourism. We've been talking about the synergies uh, that uh, you guys have been able to create, not just with your own uh, departments and constituents within uh, your, your building, <laughs> you know, uh, but with other uh, bureau or not bureaus, but other tourism agencies and, and um, uh, in, in neighboring counties and that kind of thing. It seems like in many ways you are such a dynamic force in this industry. You have gone to these places, you have helped them start up their various programs and all that. What accounts for that drive and, and why do they trust you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's, you know, uh, it's the whole idea that, you know, that we, that, that rising tide raises all boats mm -hmm. and, and we need to be, you know, the whole nature of being successful in this industry is to be able to be a collaborative. Right. and be able to work with people, whether it's your board of directors or it's your partners. And, and, you know, and the ability to pull people together to me is very, very important. And so we've not only worked at doing that here in Sonoma County, but I'm also really honored to have been elected for a second year to serve as uh, chairman of the board for the U.S. Travel Association's Destination yeah. Council. Congratulations. Which, thank you. Represent, yeah. We represent all destination marketing organizations in the United States um, that are part of US travel, about 400. Um, so that gives us also, it takes Sonoma County and we're able to put ourselves on a national scale, on a national stage in terms of making a difference in how all other destinations are marketed and operated. And, and I think part of it is we all need to be giving back to our communities. Right. You know, one of the things I, with, with the Super Bowl, I'll, I'll tell you, we all made a joint decision between the trio, we got 12 tickets. We said they're all being donated to local charities because all of those, that money is going to come back to Sonoma County. They can auction them. They can, yeah, so yeah, we've made great. tens of thousands of dollars for about six different charities between the Vintners, Wine Growers, and, and Tourism. And donating by giving up your pro bono By tickets. giving up our tickets and that's donating great. them back yeah. because that's the other thing. You know, as our community gets, you know, as we get busier and we have more visitors here, um, there's also a faction of the community that says, oh my gosh, there's too many visitors. There's too many visitors. A few years ago, this happened in south, just south of us in Sausalito. Right. And you know, they went, uh, some of the residents said, well, I can't get to my favorite dress shop or my mm -hmm. you know, favorite restaurant. They were you afraid to, that it was gonna fall into the ocean, right? You need to stop <laughs> marketing you know, Sausalito to visitors. Right, right. And so the, the city officials listened and they did. Well, within less than a year, the dress shop closed, the restaurant closed. Um, because we don't understand how important those those visitor dollars are to maintaining the quality of life that all the residents of Sonoma County have. And we have to reach a balance and we're working at that in terms of, you know, things like winery events mm -hmm. that are so important, but we also want to make sure um, that we are not impacting the environment. So thanks to the, the uh, wine growers, they have a five year, 100% sustainability goal where Are you serious? Wait, five, five years, years we will be the first region in the world and they're well over 50% uh, of the way to that. I was at the wine growers annual meeting yesterday That's and amazing. Wow. and so and we're following suit with that in terms of how the vintners operate how tourism we started uh, two years ago we started our first sustainable tourism week with the leadership from the Fairmont Sonoma Mission Inn yeah. who's long been a champion of this so we have to be good stewards of the land um, the number one reason people love to come to Sonoma County is because of the beauty the natural beauty right. and, and we need, to, we need yeah. to preserve that and protect that 
and well, let, me, let me ask you so grow responsibly so yeah no I, I, and I'm, I'm with you there and, and, and clearly you know you've, you have a vision and, and yours is a career with a capital C what would you do if you weren't doing this? I mean, you could be a diplomat, you could be an ambassador. <laughs> I mean, clearly you represent Sonoma County so well. I'd probably go back to being a chef. Yeah? I love creating, and I love cooking, and it's actually therapy for me. I love doing it at the end of a long day or long week. And, well, what's and the life cycle for somebody in your position? Like, what, what happens next? I mean, not, I mean, you're gonna be here for many, many years, obviously, but, but like, what's, like, what do you see down the road? Um, well, uh, there's there's so many options that are yeah. open when you're in destination marketing because most of us have worked our way through. Like I worked w w in hotels, You've literally got and all I've the way up, progressed yeah. through, yeah. and and I've been blessed because I've been able to live a lot of fantastic places, you know, and ex meet a lot of wonderful people mm -hmm. over the years. So, you know, you can it, the beauty is you can continue to grow in this type of a position, or you can. You know, and you can grow within the position by taking on huge, monstrous additional tasks, things like Super Bowl right. 50 that we're doing, and and we're now working on a we're working on a long-term strategic plan for the destination, and we've hired consultants to help us come up with a three-year action plan yeah. and a 10-year long-term plan, so that we are thinking responsibly ahead in terms of how we want the destination to grow, how we're right. going to manage the community issues. Um, and 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 so, but with me, I you know, I if I wanted to go back and work in a hotel or a restaurant, or you know, I could do you that could, if yeah. I wanted to, or or you're like you know, hospitality or or even, so I, I just love what I do. I've, if, I've always if, enjoyed it. Yeah, and if not Sonoma County, where? Like, if you could choose a different place, that to to, it, to put your passion and your drive into, if you had a choice, what, what would it be? I have thoroughly enjoyed every place I've been, yeah. you know, and I've spent a lot of my adult life in California. I spent some years in Michigan. I started my career in Chicago. Um, and I've truly loved every single place. Uh, you know, as a food and wine guy, Sonoma County is pretty much Nirvana for somebody yeah. like me. Um, and, you know, and I also enjoy the creative part. And, you know, when we started Sonoma County Tourism 10 and a half years ago, our budget was 3.5 million. Today it's 7.3. Right. So even with four years recession, we've been able to more than double the budget. And that type of growth. And, and your budget's are reflective of your success correct. in marketing Sonoma. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if we're not putting heads in beds, their no money. The, yeah. money is not going up. And, yeah. and so, you know, looking at that, I think it's really exciting. There's some things on the horizon that I'm very excited about. The um, adaptive control car right. you know i have a car that i drive right now that has you have to steer it but it drives itself otherwise right and when can you imagine daedalus how that would revolutionize sonoma county in to country? have the driverless car you just call it up on your smartphone it comes right. to you because we're a rural destination that doesn't have you know the the regular transportation. Well, yeah, and it's not just that; Plus, it's the drinking. Yeah, well, yeah, you go know, wine <laughs> tasting or or spirits tasting yeah. or cider tasting, and you don't need a driver. I mean, yeah, these are the type yeah. of innovations, you know, that you know we're excited about the smart train uh, coming in, and, and and as that expands and grows, and and you know, so there's so many things that technology, you know, and we're working on this long-term plan, but. Most people say you don't really know what's going to happen in a year, let alone in three years, because you think about the innovation, you know, right. that, that, you know, when I started in this business, I bought my first home computer and we didn't even have computers at work yet. Wow. Um, so <laughs> there's an evolution here. And then some of the things that are happening nationally and globally for the United States, which um, Brand USA, right. which was reauthorized um, uh, for another five years, which is finally after. You know, we never had a destination marketing organization for the United States, and now we do. So we're going after those international visitors. Um, the state of California's budget just doubled from 50 to 100 million. So we have some amazing opportunities. It's a really, really good time to be in, de in destination marketing and tourism right now. And it's a good time to uh, uh, conclude our conversation. Uh, please come back. This is fascinating stuff. Well, Especially, the, yeah. I want to talk about the technology uh, next time we chat. Yeah. Ken Fishong, the president and CEO of Sonoma County Tourism. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. It. Thanks, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.